This drawing video is presented by the Cabarrus County Library and made just for you. First, let's talk about drawing pencils. Oh, and you'll need an eraser too. Drawing pencils have different hardnesses. Let me show you. Most ordinary writing pencils are right in the middle of the hardness scale and they will say HB on them. This stands for both hard and black. On this end of the hardness scale, we have H pencils, which stands for hard. And the H might have a number in front of it to tell us how hard it is, starting with two and going up. On the other end of the hardness scale, we have B pencils, which stands for black. And the B might also have a number in front of it. B pencils are great for shading and shadow because they're darker than writing pencils. HB pencils are your standard writing pencils. And H pencils are very light compared to B pencils and are great for sketching things you'll want to erase later. Now let's talk a little about shading. For this exercise, draw three boxes. You'll want to use a B pencil if you have one. Now to shade, you have to have a light source. Let's draw a light source in the top right corner. Imagine the angle of the light shining from the top right corner to the bottom left corner. Since the top right corners of our boxes are facing toward the light, that corner will be the lightest and the bottom left will be the darkest. Hold your pencil somewhat parallel to the paper and not straight up and down. Starting at the bottom left corner, and using a light touch, shade diagonally toward the light to just beyond the middle of your box, getting lighter as you go. Working in layers and starting at the darkest point each time, shade toward the light and make your layers shorter and darker. Now let's try a technique called crosshatching. Starting at the bottom left, draw diagonal lines going one way and stop at about the middle of the box. Then draw lines going the opposite direction, coming to the same point. Overlap your lines and layers, starting at the left corner and making shorter and darker layers. This texture is often used in illustration, cartoons, and manga. You can experiment with different textures to achieve the same smooth transition from dark to light. How about circles? Start at our darkest corner and make continuous circular squiggles, stopping about halfway. Remember, use a light touch and achieve your darkness in shorter and darker layers. Now let's create an alien landscape. We'll start with a light source to help us determine where to shade. Visualize the angle of light. Now let's add a horizon line. It doesn't have to be flat unless you want it to be. Anything below your horizon is going to be what we call the foreground. Now choose a place on your horizon for the main alien house. This will be a large oval shape. Visualize it and then draw it. If you want, you can stack some other ovals on top, making sure they overlap. We'll erase the lines we don't need later. Use a light touch and use an H pencil or an HB if you have one. Now add more ovals to the foreground of all different sizes. The more varied your sizes, the more interesting it will look. Don't be afraid to overlap. Now you can erase the extra lines. You should be able to see the bottom curve of every oval, but you shouldn't see the top curve if the oval has another one stacked on top of it. Switch to your B pencil and draw over your lines to make them darker. Now we're going to start shading by adding shadows. Visualize the angle of light again. You're going to shade the side opposite your light source, starting at the edge and working your way toward the light, like we did with the box. Use a light touch and try to hold your pencil slightly on its side and not up and down. Go back over your shading, creating shorter and darker layers each time.
Shade each individual oval this way, even your stacked ovals and the ones on the ground. Next, we're going to create shadows underneath each shape. This time, we'll be shading away from the light source, starting at the bottom of each oval. Imagine the angle of the light shining on the ovals and keep that same angle as you shade away from the light. Your shading should be an indistinct reflection of the shape. Just give the impression of it, like little pools of darkness. Remember that the angle of light shining on your objects may be different in some areas, like this one. Now let's add some creatures. First, they'll need some windows. Add small oval windows to your biggest oval. Remember that walls have thickness to them, so add the impression of thickness by echoing that line like this. Now draw some creatures peeking out from the windows. Don't forget to color in the darkness around them to make them stand out. Here's where you can make this drawing reflect your imagination. Feel free to add trees or foliage, planets, stars, clouds, anything you want. Remember to shade anything you draw in the foreground the same way we shaded our ovals. Great job with your drawing. If you want to learn more, find out what's going on at your library. Find us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Cabarrus County Library. Or to find even more resources, see what we have in our catalog at www.cabarruscounty.us slash library. Thanks for being part of what makes your library awesome.